Hello and welcome to a special holiday weekend edition of Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. You know, it's been a campaign season for the ages, and the real fun hasn't even started yet. Tonight, we'll preview a general election sure to make history. In November, will we elect this country's first female president or a man with no political experience who's defied the odds at every turn? Joining me now to look ahead to this historic matchup is a man who knows a thing or two about Washington, D.C., former Republican Speaker of the House and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. All right, good evening, Mr. Speaker. We're thrilled to have you on, Justice, and, and uh, so I'm going to get right to it. You know, as we inch closer to the election, it seems that all of the givens from almost a year ago are uh, upside down. Hillary was going to be coronated and Donald Trump was just dabbling. And now we've got Donald Trump before, as he says, he's even started beating Hillary. What do you attribute this to? Well, I think a couple of things, partly personality. Uh, Trump has turned out to be an amazingly entertaining national figure who has people uh, absolutely mesmerized watching him. And he's making points that lots of people agree with. Uh, turns out Hillary's a really bad candidate uh, who is sort of boring and who doesn't communicate authenticity the way Trump does. I think second, um, Trump did a brilliant job of using all of modern social media, uh, including television and talk radio and Twitter and Facebook and you name it. Uh, and I think that made him different. And frankly, Sanders did something very similar. He reached out on the Internet, $27 a piece, actually for several months raised more money than Clinton. And so Clinton has found herself in a life and death struggle at the very moment that Trump has now clearly passed 16 other candidates to become the nominee. It's, it is not at all the year any of us would have guessed a year ago. And, you know, based on what you said, Mr. Speaker, I mean, this is almost a new era in politics where you've got uh, both of these candidates not going the traditional media market and, and political ads and all that, but just tweeting things out. And, and Donald Trump, when you think about it, I mean, the man is, is I, he doesn't sleep, I'm convinced of it, but he is tweeting and and he is constantly on the phone. He's got the control room numbers of most of the stations. Hillary, on the other hand, I have this visual of her in the beginning of the campaign where she was marching and they roped off the reporters from her. I mean, isn't she just a personification of the old school politics? Well, she is. And, and she has um, a number of really bad habits. First of all, she's way overstaffed. Uh, you know, Trump is his own instant response yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, he is he's able to be fast, nimble. Uh, he learns uh, and he's constantly in motion. She has lots of people around her. I think they have 10 times as big an organization as Trump does. Trump may have won the nomination for less money than anybody in modern times. I mean, his ability to use earned media and social media has been, as you pointed out correctly, literally historic uh, and potentially changes the game. There's also another problem. Even when she tries to be authentic, Hillary just can't pull it off. I mean, when they said, oh, let's be authentic, we'll go use the subway in New York. <laughs> well, it was embarrassing. I mean, you want to say, come on, guys, yeah. ever do something she's used to doing, mm -hmm. like sitting in the back of a limousine surrounded by the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't try to make her somebody she's not. But, you know, I, 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 to me, and, and the numbers that you quote are very accurate. We had Corey uh, Lewandowski on the, uh, the campaign manager of the Trump campaign. He said, hey, we've got like 70 people. She has 732 people on her campaign staff. But doesn't that in itself speak to efficiency, speak to the, you know, the intelligence that a businessman has and the redundancy in government we're going to start seeing float away hopefully well I think that's right I mean Trump if you remember with the woman skating rink which the city of New yeah. York couldn't fix in Central Park <laughs> yes. the city spent six years 13 million dollars Trump and they couldn't fix it it could, did not make ice Trump finally stepped in they gave him approval uh, in, in three months for two and a half million dollars he fixed something which the city had thrown away $13 million in six years. You take that efficiency, that entrepreneurial drive, and you apply it to the federal government, 
it could be a very exciting couple of years. And what about the issue of, uh, you know, with a, the, the, Donald Trump started with immigration and then the, the ban on Muslims and all that. And, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton came out recently and said, you know, the promoting the ban on Muslims uh, or saying you're going to do it is promoting terrorism. It's kind of like Barack Obama saying Guantanamo, Gitmo promotes terrorism. Is this political speak? Is this just, you know, no. like this political correctness gone wild? Wild, where people say whatever they think their side uh, no, wants to spew I, I, out. I, th I think it's I think it's a reminder that the left is crazy <laughs> when it comes to Islamic supremacy. You know, the the first great attack is 1979 when the Ayatollah Khomeini allows mm -hmm. the students to take over the U.S. embassy illegally. Now, I don't think Donald Trump was the cause of that. Uh, you had you had the attacks on two American embassies in East Africa under Bill Clinton. You had the attack at Kobar Towers under Bill Clinton. You had the attack on the USS Cole in Yemen under Bill Clinton. I don't think Donald Trump caused any of those things. But if you're a left winger, you have to forgive terrorists anything because they're anti-American, and you don't want to be too aggressive about people who are anti-American because it violates your requirement as a left winger. Uh, to, to never fully protect America. And it's a sad commentary uh, on politics uh, on the left anyway in America. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Newt Gingrich, thanks so much for being with us this Good evening. Good to be with you.